So what, so what is the Garcia Center? Um, tell us a little bit about the history. How did you get started there? And yeah. Well, um, I got started at the Garcia Center with you. <laughs> <laughs> Way back in the day, huh? No, yeah. So, yeah, it started as a volunteer at the Garcia Center, like 2014, 2015. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's been pretty cool seeing the, the changes at the center. Um, it's... Change is a strange thing because it's like you don't really notice change until like until you actually make like stop and like really reflect on it. It's like, like, oh, damn, all that happened. <laughs> um, and I've been experiencing that a lot, a lot lately, too, with just the garden space that we've been developing at the center. Um, like just a year ago, the, it was an empty lot and like the garden has grown a lot. Uh, we recently um, finished putting down the bags for uh, an earth dome, and that was pretty exciting. Um, so, yeah, so it's yeah, it's, earth, it's been a journey. Dome, yeah. um, project. Who is it? Sam Castro. Yeah, Sam. Yeah, um, Samuel Armando <laughs> Castro <laughs> Maron. <laughs> yeah, he's been leading that. Yeah. Um, and what what who funded that? The Center for Innovation, right? Yeah, Center for Innovation, they have a, pro, a program called Cali Catalyst, and so, um, yeah, we got $5,000 from them, and that helped support getting Sam up to Cal Earth in Hesperia to take a couple of workshops there. Um, it also helped fund some getting, like, the materials that we needed. Um, so we got barbed wire and the bags, um, and, yeah, just the... Pretty, well, that's kind of what's neat about the the building of the dome is that it doesn't really require very much because mm -hmm. you're pretty much just using the dirt that's there um, in the space. And so it's been pretty cool seeing it so come it's like together. A, I think it's an affordable housing alternative, right? In a sense. Yeah, it's kind of low cost, but yeah. also um, low um, um, in terms of the impact uh, that it has on the environment. It's a low impact way to build the a structure um because yeah it's just it's just the dirt that's there you know we're not yeah just, i'm excited to see it finished because you guys yeah. just finished the the frame right so now it's just like filling it in yeah like, so the next thing is we're gonna do we're gonna plaster it yeah. and um give it some color and we have a, a skylight um and oh, so then so we're awesome. also gonna just get like a plexiglass cover for it at the top mm -hmm. um yeah yeah, I got to go to Cal Earth with Christian Flores. He took me um, as like the housing organizer for ICUC to, to document, right? And I got to see all their structures. And I'm just like really, um, I guess, excited to see if they get the permitting needed through the county to allow those homes to be built in lots, right? Because I think that's their biggest battle is they're not getting the per permits because it's like affordable housing mm -hmm. and all these I'm sure they're getting lobbied by the people who are building, you know, homes the way they're doing them now, which is like squared frames with wood. Mm -hmm. um, but they've yeah. already found ways to model normal homes. Like me and you could be living in an earth dome pretty much. Um, no, yeah. So we're we're just a couple of amateurs at the Garcia Center, you know. And so, <laughs> But you're cutting edge in that you're bringing the first earth dome to San Bernardino. No, yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. For me, it's just like experimenting, you know, Um experimenting um just to well Back just track. on that just oh. to yeah just kind of on that idea of experimentation yeah, yeah go ahead um like the garcia center for me is an experiment um and this is very artistic of you to say a very creative <laughs> thing <laughs> no it, it is you know it's like whoever like whoever comes after me and serves as director after me is going to have their own ideas about how to run the space um, but also like I see the Garcia center as like, a, and it, it's like a, a new iteration of projects before in, in the past, mm -hmm. um, that Ernie Garcia was trying to, to get, you know, get going. So like the arts on fifth mm -hmm. for me, that was like the first iteration of the Garcia center. Cause the, 
the Arts on Fifth was that's pretty much where Arts Connection had like their original office. Really, it I wasn't didn't like know about that. It, Arts Connection wasn't even Arts Connection at that point. It was like I think it was just called like the the Art Council of the County. Oh, okay. okay. So I don't think it had even been called Arts Connection at that point. Uh, Cal State San Bernardino also had offices at Arts on Fifth. Um, and yeah, so very similar to the Garcia Center. They offered like workshops. Like a creative hub. Yeah, it was like a creative space for, for the community. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of lack of funding, um, and to my understanding, the the person that was leasing the space, um, you know, just wasn't cooperating, I guess. Um, so it just became, it came to a point where the Arts on Fifth, they wasn't able to continue. Mm-hmm. Um, but... You know, Ernie and Dottie, you know, they've... Powerhouses. Yeah. Especially, like... So, they, yeah, they've in the consistently arts. been mm-hmm. involved in the community of San Bernardino. Um, you know, and so, for me, they're, like, they're, they've are they definitely kind of set, like, a standard, like, a, in terms of continuously being involved in the community and continuously having this vision that you want to build and, and grow... Um, and you have to do that because if, if it's not you, then it's somebody else. And it's kind of, you have to really decide like who, whose vision is going to win out, you know, and, um, something that happened too, like with, what well, that's been happening in the region too, is like the warehouses, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. the, industry, the warehouses, right, coming yeah, in. That's- that, that's a vision. You know, yeah. that's a vision that's been told for since the 70s or yeah, so. Yeah, or the from, 60s. Yeah. 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 Because I, I saw John uh, Housing, I think, or Husing. John yeah. Husing? Yeah. John Husing, Husing. Yeah. So he's, he's been, been, he's been around for a that. while. <laughs> yeah. And so it's not, it didn't just happen overnight. It's been, yeah. you know, over years, decades, consistently a vision gets built and, promoted by an older white guy yeah. pushing this on people of color that are lower income and yeah areas. and so yeah, experimental but, racism right yeah but so but the, like connect oh, yeah, going back <laughs> yeah but connect trying to connect it right it's like um like with the people's plan and everything it's like what whatever the vision is we have to be consistent on it yeah and definitely. it can be very tiring to like always be on that you know <laughs> like on it Mm-hmm. Um, so you definitely have to take like moments to rest, but as a community, we need to know, okay, this is what we're going, this is what we're trying to achieve. Um, yeah, just, and sometimes, you know, it takes, it doesn't re- re- like, again, I look at Ernie and Dottie, I'm like, they've been consistent, you know, they um, are, they are. I'm sure in, like, you know, not everybody's their fan, you know. Yeah, they yeah. rubbed some you know? people wrong. <laughs> yeah, like, um, you know. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to get into yeah, it. Yeah, we don't need to get into it, I guess. But, um, but it's but I just feel like you're always gonna rub people wrong, right? Yeah. When you fu- fulfill your vision too, or like yeah. you continue your vision because not everybody's gonna agree. Yeah, and and it's just like John John uh, Husing, right? Like his vision, we don't agree with it, and mm-hmm. so he rubs us wrong in that sense of like. Yeah. Why are you doing this to our communities? Yeah. But I'm sure he has some friends that are super happy with what he's done because he's made them a lot of money mm-hmm. in this whole industry and in this like development process. But like going back, well, like you're the director of the Garcia Center. I would 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 you agree that it's a creative hub? Like, oh yeah, definitely. I've seen it flourishing, yeah. and um, so going back to the history of it, though, um, you were saying like the idea kind of seeds from arts on fifth you would say or yeah they, um again ernie was involved with arts on fifth but then mm-hmm. again that project didn't you know continue it didn't pan out all the way yeah. to the yeah but you know again that consistency ernie kept looking to develop a space and you know the opportunity came up for um for the nonprofit organization San that Bernardino, Ernie was a yeah, yeah. That Ernie was a part of San Bernardino Valley Concert Association. Yeah, so that's the nonprofit name. Mm-hmm. They were able to get a lease for the building from the San Bernardino Water Department, um, and for ninety nine years, yeah, yeah, ninety nine years for how much? Money? At a dollar a year, yeah. Wow, that's such a deal. Um, 
Yeah, and it's not like it's not unheard of. You know, it's it's a lot of different cities and communities are able to make those kinds of deals. Yeah, but you just have to be willing, or the leadership needs to be willing to work with you. Yeah, you know, and so what's I the get, what's the process called for that? Um, Do you remember? No, like the name of getting a lease for that much and like no. I can't. Dang, I, I also can't remember. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. Go ahead. Sorry. No, but you, you off. yeah, and so it's um, yeah, it's. But yeah, so but that's the idea. You wanna, you need to have good leadership. Yeah, definitely. To be able, that'll you know be willing to work with you, that kind of shares that vision of what you're trying to achieve for the community. So you're saying the leadership that the Garcia Center worked with was the water district. Yeah, the the San, well yeah well two entities so yeah. the San Bernardino Water Department, mm-hmm. but then there's also the East Valley Water District, um, yeah the San Bernardino Valley Water District, um, and so we there's board members there. Um, Susan Longville, for example, was very supportive of just developing um, more green spaces in San Bernardino, and so so we actually own the property where the garden is located. Mm-hmm. Um, they sold it to us for uh, ten thousand dollars. Oh wow! So that's and um, but we just got like a notice from the county of San Bernardino that it's valued like at a, way more than that. It's like valued at like one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Wow, dude! You came up. Yeah. So it's they a good deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and now it's a community space. It's a community yeah. owned. That's something we were talking about in our last podcast. Is like community owned development, right? and community led development and that's what you guys are doing there with that space which mm-hmm. is awesome it's like no yeah and so the again the the resources are there the assets are there it's just you have to build that relationship and that trust with people mm-hmm. um, definitely um because you know if i if we would have gone to the water department and asked for the lease of the building like like nobody would have given it to us yeah, it's young but, kids. Yeah, but time. you know, Ernie, who's you know dedicated himself to the community for decades, you know, he has a a reputation, you know, serving as dean of the College of Education mm-hmm. at Cal State San Bernardino. There's an elementary school named after him in Colton. You know, he's been and Dottie as well. Dottie yeah, also is like Dottie's powerhouse. also yeah. like a, a doctor in her own right, and um. Yeah, and so they educator, educator, yeah. administration in the district. Yeah, so yeah, so again, yeah, they're a powerhouse couple, um, and so when you know when they make the 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 um, the suggestion of hey, could you, could you possibly give us this building? You know, it's kind of hard to say no. You know. Yeah, yeah. So they came in. They they asked for it. They got that building for a dollar um, for 99 years, right? Lease a dollar a year. Um, and then you guys just had to do the tenant improvements, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it just... And what's the it, history of that place? Like the center in general? Like, do you know... Yeah, the building itself has yeah. a lot of history. I don't even fully know all of its history. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's been a lot of things. Um, we still... We have a lot of people that come by and remember the space from like the 70s and the 80s because it used to be part of the parks and rec department oh uh, they had a community center there or what <clears throat> yeah so it used to be a, a community center okay, under the parks right, and yeah. rec um and then i don't know if it was this was like separately but it was also like you can still see a faded out sign uh, on on east street that says san Marino cultural center um mm. But so the, we still have people coming that remember themselves as children taking like ballet classes and just come into the building. Um, That's awesome, man. Like, so it has like a legacy in people's hearts and yeah. minds. And like, yeah, so it's a lot of different people. Like Freddie, uh, West Side Stories, he has a couple of pictures that he says are from the Garcia Center. What? And like he said his mom would take them there or his mom worked there or something um that's really cool and um yeah so it's been it's been really cool to kind of just capture people's little like memory snapshots you know of the place 
But even before then, like it was originally built as a fire station, and then I know that it was it was taken over by the army uh, during World War II because they needed a place to like, you know, just organize themselves, organize the the air the air base. Mm -hmm. So they were there for a year until they got all of that settled. Um, and yeah, but then it's also there's also vaults at the center, and so like needs to possibly be a bank. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it so it feels like it was a part it a of the city hall or something or no? That was um, made I up. don't know. Again, yeah. there's a lot of um, the pumps. It really, right? it really feels um, like the city was more centralized at one point. Yeah. So everything was more centralized around like E Street, and like baseline. Yeah, and so because you have San Bernardino High School, San Bernardino High School used to be where Sturgis is now. Like mm. the Sturgis used to be the school's auditorium. Oh, uh, and then they rebuilt San Bernardino High School. Or? Yeah, so they moved San Bernardino High School from where Sturgis is up to just a couple of blocks up to where it is now. Okay. Um, wow, that's that's interesting. Yeah, it's a cool history. So yeah, but it's all kind of in that area where it's all kind of centralized, and you know the McDonald's is right there as well on E Street. Uh, just a couple blocks up from baseline as well and it's beautiful architecture too the garcia center yeah. i think that's something that's yeah it's like an adult colonial yeah, Spanish. Adobe. yeah it's the walls are super thick <laughs> you know and really thick walls yeah <laughs> and it was acoustics all, right when you yeah. have bands in the auditorium yeah and if so and, and it was all part of the wpa it was like a wpa project you know the works and publics administration yeah. project and so yeah and so you like looking at the building you can kind of tell like it's not completely like completely uniform. Like yeah. you can see like how the beans were like um like cut, um and so yeah, it's it's it, yeah, it's, it's a beauty. lot of history yeah. and it's beauty for sure. And yeah. I think that's something we talked about on the Arts and Historical Preservation Commission was like something Robert brought up right, and a, a few other commissioners was like protecting these buildings. So they're they're trying to create that process now to where we could be protecting, you know, like the Garcia Center, like that church that's getting torn down by the school district or the county school district. I don't mm -hmm. remember which one. Um, yeah, but the just school like, district is tearing down that church on E Street as well, yeah. Which sucks because yeah. we should be trying to, you know, save historical buildings and refurbish them and make them, you know, like we need history in our cities. It's yeah. like, like you're saying, like if the Garcia Center was demolished, right? Instead of turned into this amazing creative hub. Um, all those people who had those memories and that attachment are now losing that attachment from that place, you know, that land. And they're not... Um, you're not continuing to build that cultural love for the city and that community, like that pride in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I see that as like a huge problem moving forward. And, and something like we were trying to build, right, when we were younger is like through SBGN is like build pride back in the community and try to get people involved in that like cultural. Yeah, yeah, you're completely right. Like it's hard to develop pride if you keep seeing some of your childhood memories destroyed, like literally destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like... Um, but then the hope is that people can build new memories, but if there's no places pe for people to build memories in, you know, it's, it's tough. So yeah, we've been losing a lot. So the carousel mall is going to get demolished soon. Yeah. That, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess it was kind of dilapidated now. Um, yeah. But you know, but all the, like, even, even just like the fun places, like the, uh, like recreational places, like, mm -hmm. like I know we had a couple meetings, uh, together like at the skating ring that was oh, on highland and that one's gone that no. one's gone all those nights skating over there that was fun yeah. the del rosa bowling lanes are gone yeah um, so in terms of like you know and i think for me this was one of the things too you know it's um um that's why i really like part being part of like generation now because it was really focused on like people that are not exactly it's like young adults you know mm -hmm. it's like not ex people that are still want to like look they're looking for things to, fun things to do in the city um because it's it's hard to find fun things to do in the city we would make our own a lot yeah. of times right like when we're at Secum um and we would get on the lake <laughs> <We laughs> yeah so well that, that's kind of the thing you just you know if you have <laughs> nothing to do then you you know you kind of find you figure out what to do yourself and sometimes that might in our in our case i think we were doing positive things yeah we were but definitely you know, doing positive. <laughs> you know 
Uh, Cleaning the park <laughs> all that time for the city. Yeah. Like, come on. But uh, but if but if not, then you find destructive ways, you know, to keep yeah. yourself occupied too, you know. Definitely. Um, but let's like, going back to the Garcia Center, man. Is like, so you have this creative hub. You you recently took took uh, over as like director, right? Um, 2020. Around yeah, there. it's it's cr- again, it's crazy. It's like and, I'm already going t- into my third year, and like this, yeah, this is. And who's I'll, all there? Like who's all. Who's all there with you? Like, what orgs are there um, having office space, right? Yeah, well, Arts Connection is there. Um, the San Bruno Symphony has an office there. Young Samoa has an office there. So those are the regular orgs that are there. Mm-hmm. But then on top of that, we just have uh, a variety, so many different artists that are using the space as well. Uh, we have printmakers, um, just ceramics artists. Um, ceramics. Yeah, ceramics. And so it's... It's it's Milpa, right? Yeah. I see them playing like on their Instagram. They're there like yeah, doing. Yeah, so their, we just um, recently held the Dia de los Muertos event at the yeah. center, and yeah, and that's been fun. And just again, it's just it's been fun seeing the space be very collaborative. Mm-hmm. Um, like the staff, Arts Connection staff has grown a lot too. Before, it just to be, just used to be for the most part just uh, Jenny and Sania that were like the two staff people but now they've brought on more people so now we have like artists like bianca gomez uh, willis uh Ulyssa, um just a number of other people i think that the cool thing they're doing too is like how they're utilizing that office space like they opened it up like what monthly to a new artist yeah so we've like been yeah making. so they've been having a, a monthly artist in residence yeah that's, and so that's, that's been really awesome. cool and it's like recently they had a the artist and mike um a model mm-hmm. um uh, they did a like a paint a paint a program with the community for like around halloween and um uh, but been, yeah before that they had like alexa vasquez they had cesar garcia um yeah and again it's like even with cesar like i remember meeting cesar as part of sbgn and Mm -hmm. like seeing him come back and like reconnect and it's like and with Cesar we did a like we there was like 14 different artists that contributed to like this large print uh like wood block and it was it was amazing that was definitely historic dude being there and being able to see it in person like that was so cool and you guys got a good documentation I think that's also key that some people don't realize like that documentation part is so like you guys photographing the garden and then photographing it to where it is now, or like how you guys documented the process of that print, um, that's all gonna be historical one day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if you don't have that that documentation, then it's just living in people's minds. And yeah. you know, once those people are gone, nobody's gonna remember the, that that happened, right? So like that historical aspect is, I think something you guys have been doing well, um, especially from what i see on your in, like you guys have been growing your your following on social media at least and i know in person it's just like whenever i'm there there's always something happening now like it's just flourishing in that i think i'm just really happy to see it man i'm just really happy to see this like no yeah and so it's it's kind of really overwhelming um in term like just having conversations with people people really see the center as like a home yeah um like I've had conversations where people are literally crying, you know, like what the center, like how much the center means to them. Um, and so it kind of makes you realize again, just kind of like the absence of these resources to the community and how valuable it is to build relationships with people um, and, with, and with the community, like just as a whole. Um, feeling like you're part of something and and so i feel like how can we do that for the city of san Bernardino as a whole you know how can we yeah what is your process dude tell us i think that's (laughs) one thing i like about podcasting is like what are those teachable moments that you can give to folks like how did you because when you took over the center first off it was covid so you're dealing with like people not coming out to events so you had i guess you had time to like um structure get you know get uh, read through all the old stuff, right? Kind of structure yourself, yeah. see what grants are coming up. Yeah, um, I'm I'm still learning a lot, like in this position. 
um, like, you know, just learning how to better organize myself, how to delegate, how to be a leader to others and making sure but that they can do what they need to do as well. But mm -hmm. in a way that I'm not like micromanaging, but also in a way that they also have their like their own independence to kind of do things on their own as well. So I'm still learning a lot. Um, but I had the benefit of kind of going into the, the position that I already had years of experience or like just working in the community, mm -hmm. like, you know, with Generation Now and just different organizations, you know, being connected with like, you know, working with like the Youth Action Project and, you know, just kind of getting to know different organizations. Yeah, teaching also in the as well. Yeah. You know, just getting a chance to, yeah, meet professors at Cal State. So I was able to teach like a small course at Cal State and also work with the school district um, and meet some of the teachers there. Uh, like learn about like again just different programs that are available like the Child, Sunday Youth Corps childhood Court. development I remember when you were yeah. reading that book for your class yeah. about you know learning about teaching yeah. children so I think that's really good to know when you're a community leader especially running a center so yeah and yeah, yeah and so for me it's at least the way I like to work with people is like I like to recognize the child within everybody, you mm -hmm. know, because um, that was one of the things I got to see just working with different ages um, as an educator is like everybody's in their own, you know, journey on their own process because, uh, you know, you're working with little kids and it's like you see them struggling, but then you also see them succeed and they're like you can see like their joy, but you can also see their sadness and the same thing with with adults, you know, mm -hmm. like you see them kind of struggle, like, because some of them might be single parents, you know, but they're trying to like advance themselves in life. So they're, you know, trying to manage, you know, being a single parent, but also going to school. Um, and so, you know, just kind of seeing those struggles with people or, or, you know, you, you again, everybody's on their own journey. Mm -hmm. And so, Definitely. um, and so just making space for people in that way. Um, and like, and like for, like, for example, um, Sarah, Sarah Vasquez comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, Amazing printmaker, by the way. Yeah. Cause Sarah, I'm, I met Sarah, Artist. I think just at a, I think she was vending at, a, at an event. I, well, I think I first met her at the Garcia Center. <laughs> we were mm -hmm. having a, a vendor event at the Garcia Center. And then after that, I would see her at other, at other spaces also uh, where she had a table. Um, and I remember just, like, asking her if she'd be interested in the future, like, being, you know, to teach a class uh, around printmaking. Because we had, we used to have a teacher, Uncle Bacon, but then he, he moved to Kentucky. And so we haven't had... Mm -hmm like regular printmaking classes for a while. Uncle Bacon's awesome too. Shout mm -hmm. out. <laughs> Uncle. And uh, <laughs> yeah, but Sarah at first was, you know, very hesitant to, you know, want to teach a class. Um, and so it's been very like awesome just seeing them like go from that being like, oh no, I don't think so to like actually taking a class or teaching a class and, enjoying it mm -hmm. and then working with arts connection afterwards where they were doing uh they did a whole week class with uh teaching with, high during, schoolers yeah, during yeah. teaching high school during age, summer during and the summer yeah that class made some amazing artwork too so mm -hmm. like she's a great instructor so again just kind of seeing people's growth and again it's everything's an experiment you're just trying everything out and seeing seeing what works seeing if you like something or you don't like something so you're saying your method is experimentation. Yeah. What, I, what I heard before, though, was like relationship building. So these are some points I'm going to pull out is like build good, strong relationships with the community, right? Through years of building those relationships, um, planting seeds. So like being able to say, you know, you told Sarah a few years ago or you know, maybe even a year ago, like, are you interested in teaching, you know, printmaking? And then like coming back and asking again later and, and she had time to think about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I see those as like relationship building and planting seeds, like making sure, and then maybe even nourishing those seeds through the relationship building. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah, pretty much, you know, and it's, that's pretty much my process, at least, you know, it's just like, again, it's that consistency part aspect of it, for mm -hmm. sure, you know, it's, again, I don't think, I, I don't think, not to say that I'm doing the best job, but I don't think the job that I'm doing wouldn't be as good if I hadn't, you know, had that time to develop those relationships with the community already uh, beforehand. Um, and so definitely you built trust like there's a trust mm -hmm. between you and the community so mm -hmm. and yeah you're, yeah, really, you're yeah. a really chill guy man you're easy to get along with i've known <laughs> you for a long time now yeah. and uh yeah no yeah it's like even with agua of milpa you know knowing him for years and i really for me i felt like they really kicked off my my start serving as director mm -hmm. i felt like because they were figuring out what to do too during COVID. So they did a, they filmed the video at the center where they did like a little procession through the patio area. And that was cool because, um, again, we were able to stay active during the pandemic, mm -hmm. just doing, you know, filming videos at the center. But that was, for me, that was like really cool. It just like, for me, it was just like a, it, it was a good start being able to do stuff like that it gave you some inspiration to mm -hmm. keep going on your path mm -hmm. so yeah and it's been yeah and again it's been it's been a real pleasure just meeting people um and people that are younger than me you know like feature first like oh yeah yeah that. these are people in their like early 20s um uh, some of them i think were still like not even 20 yet um and so they were doing some amazing work too, man. Yeah. I've seen some of their stuff and I was like, wow. Yeah. And so even, even with them, it's been real cool. Like, uh, with Dre, um, so Dre was part of feature first. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been real cool seeing like their work. They do amazing work. They're like multi-talented. Um, they're an illustrator, but they also, um, do, uh, just film work in general. They like, they've done music videos. And, but now they work for Arts Connection as well. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm So, yeah, it's been it's been interesting to see, again, people's journeys, you know? As, like, for you, for when you first meet them, how they can, like, stay involved and kind of find, you know, find themselves into a new role or serving in a different capacity. It's been, mm -hmm. it's been cool to see that happen. And I think that's just going to keep growing, you know, with the space and like the more people you're serving and like even the younger generation, right? Like maybe all these high school students you served in the summer through Arts Connections program, right? Them coming back to discover the space maybe in four years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like then they're going to have that relationship already. They're going to have those memories that these other people are having from the 90s, right? Or the 80s that you're yeah. saying. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's really important about that, building the community re relationships, um, you know, also hospitality. I think that's something Jenica taught me a lot about is like you, you guys have made the center very, um, you know, welcoming. And I think that's also helped is like just welcoming to all people and just, you know, to the community in general. So, yeah, no, yeah, I, it's, that's something that I'm still learning I feel like I can I can still improve on that, but mm -hmm. but yeah, just showing gratitude towards people that are taking time out of their day to volunteer and to support, you know, however they can. It's been again just yeah. So I just want to take time and like kind of express my gratitude towards everybody that's definitely been supportive of the center. Because yeah, you know, for me it was just like for. Like, yeah, during the pandemic, I would just should go to the center, look through papers. It felt like it was just me. didn't feel like I was doing very much. Um, but luckily, there's, you know, there's Hubert and Eric um, mm -hmm. that are there and kind of helping out. And and so, but... Daniel, that's, I think that's one of the wildest things is that you guys are, like, pretty much volunteerism. Like... I think long term, you guys hopefully can get some operational money to to hire more staff. But definitely, like you need structure, you need you need that process, right? Because right now you are 
taking on many hats, which mm-hmm. is really hard to direct when you're also like wearing all the other hats. And yeah. I know you brought in Eric to do program management, right? Or event management. Um, but it's still like, that's one person for this large center. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just finding, I no, think, yeah, so it's a lot of it. Has so if anybody has money out there, they <laughs> want to donate San Bernardino Valley concert association definitely no, yeah. could use money to, no, yeah, and to we, programming. Um, luckily we do have funding, but, yeah. but over the long term, we definitely need, you know, continuous support. Like we've been lucky to have funding from the state, you know, uh, assembly members of Luis Reyes and James Ramos were able to advocate for us and include us in the state budget. And so we got a million dollars uh, written for us in the state budget that we were using to establish the garden, but also make renovations to the building and also introduce new programming. So we're going to, uh, we already purchased the equipment for mm-hmm. glass blowing. So we're going to, um, so it's on its way. So we're going to hopefully get it before the end of the year, or if not the beginning of the new year, 2023. Um, and so hopefully, um, because that's one of the interesting things too about San Bernardino is just like the, like the history of glass blowing. But so, but yeah, we have, we have funds there. We also got funds from the uh, Inland Empire Health Plan. They've been very supportive. Mm-hmm. Loma Linda University, they're the School of Health. Um, so like a lot of different health institutions have been very supportive. Um, and then just volunteer, like different organizations, like the Inland Empire, like Resource Conservation District. They've donated trees. Uh, they've held workshops at the space. Um, yeah, and like the Highland Lions Club donated a couple of the trees as well. So we've been very fortunate to just get the support from like the community, but then also like state agencies like the California Arts Council also recently gave us a grant for like close to $30,000. Um, so yeah, it's so, but it's, but again, it's over the long term. We definitely need to need that, like the consistent flow of funds into the center. Um, so like on top of the glass blowing, mm-hmm. um, pretty soon too, we're also working on establishing a store at the center. Um, just, oh, I heard about that. Yeah. I'm excited to see. So yeah, the idea with the store is to, it's not going to sustain the center itself, but maybe it, one day. Yeah, maybe. You never know. We'll see how things <laughs> develop, but like yeah, the idea yeah. with the store that, you know, a little, like, you know, it'll bring a little bit of income into the space, mm-hmm. but then, but it will also support and kind of help artists in our community also sell their work as well. Um, and so are you guys also looking at, um, the publishing still or what happened with that? I know you're, yeah, possibly, but publishing is a little bit more difficult, okay. you know, cause like you, your content building, mm. you know? And so that's, you'd need a dedicated person just to do focus on that content building. Yeah. 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 Um, whatever that content is, you know, if it's written or video, audio, whatever it is, like you still need somebody that's dedicated to that. Um, like you're like you're dedicated to this, you know, for like just as B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. You know, so um, I was gonna bring that up with you. Is like you guys should definitely be hiring somebody for communications, mm-hmm. or you know, who would document all your guys' events, who would make videos, uh, promotional stuff, but also press release. Yeah. So again, we're like, because that helps with grants. Are. You know what I mean? Yeah. They'll help you with grants. Um, yeah. Definitely. So we're we're in the process, uh, like of you know, of, of kind of really organizing ourselves and really figuring that all out. Cause again, it's like, I was pretty much the first employee. Like I set up my own payroll, you know, <laughs> there was nobody there to like, it was like, okay, you're hired, yeah, you know, yeah. well the board, right. The board approved it. Yeah. You it's know, but, the board, but so. I still set up my own paperwork, you know, like I was doing like, I, I pretty much, yeah. It's like, I set up my own payroll. Um, and so they, but they approved it, but yeah, they have to approve it, but it's like, but I'm the one who's managing like the funds. Well, that's how everything. most nonprofits are, right? Most nonprofits start with just one employee, like one yeah. director. Um, and it's usually their baby. Um, mm-hmm. but for you, it's like the community's baby. Cause like the Garcia's brought in a lot of people in the beginning. There was the older generation of folks. 
yeah. like Richard. Um, I forgot the other dude. Uh, John, is it John? Um, the one who was also like at the library all the time. He's on the library's board. Uh, I don't. I can't remember. But you guys had like a lot of, you know, the older generation came came in and volunteered and really helped build up the mm-hmm. space. And I remember you were also a part of that, is like helping um, organize volunteers through SBGN to to fix up the center, paint it, to add in floors, to all the, do all the construction work mm-hmm. that needed to happen. Um, but not like, what, what, so you guys have your budget. Like, what's your process right now as a director, though? Like, what what can people gonna learn in the sense of like? How often are you writing grants? Or do you take time to write grants like weekly? Or are you? Yeah, you kind of, you have to. <laughs> yeah. You have to. Um, yeah, it's just. Um, Especially if you don't have a grant writer, right? That's why yeah. you would hire that position in a nonprofit. Yeah, so it's, it's difficult. Um, yeah, but when it comes to grant, with, with grants specifically, it helps to know people. Like it, Definitely. You know, it's like you can, you can write grants kind of cold just you know if you see the if you see that there's an opening you can apply for it and see what happens but that, that really doesn't seem to be as effective as you already having a relationship with them somebody on the panel right yeah. who decides or the organizations you know so it's yeah. like because it makes the process a whole lot easier there's not that much like guesswork of like am i gonna get it am i not gonna get it you know it's like so it's it's but so, but at the end of the day, you still have to be able to show the work, you know, that what are you doing? What are you producing? What are, what services are you providing for the community? Um, that documentation. But then that, but then that also that, it's, that continuously changes as well. Yeah. You know, like what you're like, cause you're the people that you serve changes as well. Yeah. I could see that in some aspects. I would also say you would want to like create the same program. I think you guys are doing that already, like naturally, right? Is creating like solid programming, which would be like your surroundings. Oh, yeah, because again, people have different requests, blowing. right? Yeah. Like in terms of like people come to us as like, oh, you know, do you have any drawing classes, painting classes? Mm. But then they're also looking specifically f- for things for their kids, you know? And, and are you documenting all that, writing it yeah. down for later future programming? Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, and it's, but it, but if you get into like, because right now most of the programming that we do is for like all ages, you know, it's just definitely yeah, it's just for any for anybody who wants to come in. Um, so the idea is that parents would come in with their children, um, but most people, it's, it seems like the cause is like, oh, people want to like leave their kids at the center, <laughs> you know. Oh man, so you need a you so need, you need that's to get a different like, that's a whole yeah, different you, need to get you know like world daycare you know. <laughs> um. So, but we, again, but it's been nice to like see different, like Arts Connection kind of do it. You know, they do the after school program. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, so you can kind of see like, okay. So, you know, and it's like working again, I've, I've worked as a teacher, so I already kind of know what it's like to work with, you know, just students in general. Yeah. And so you kind of have to make those decisions. It's like, what, what are the programs that you want to create and develop? um and ha- like and keep them consistent you know um but then you also have to like adjust you know because somebody might you know because um the community might not even know what printmaking is you have to introduce people to printmaking mm-hmm. or else they're not gonna be interested in it or you know again it's just kind of knowing who the, your community is um because again there's gonna be people that come to you for different things, you know, uh, everybody has an idea, you know, and so, and it's kind of difficult to, like, manage that, because uh, that's, you get to a point where you have to start saying no to people, mm-hmm. you know, you can't continuously say yes, because then that's just, you know, develops to burnout, and, and it just, again, it just, it, it's just, it's not structured to yeah. become chaotic. Yeah. Definitely. Man, it must be hard to say no to folks, though. You have to yeah, be. especially when it's a good idea as well. But, yeah. you know, just, there's just not the time, the resources, um, depending on what the idea is. You know, it Space. might require, like, yeah, like a budget, you know. Like, you know, where's, you know. 
But but again, that's kind of like the beautiful thing about the community too is like people are willing to do things again with no with no funding backing them and so they're taking their own time and their own energy to try to create something. Um but again, it's you don't want to you don't want to take advantage of the community either. And so at least with all the classes that we offer at the center, we always try to make sure that we're paying the instructors, you know, mm-hmm. something, you know, they, so the instructors take a percentage of like ticket sales and class so, fees. Yeah. Class fees. Yeah, yeah. It's hard, man. It's hard. Especially like the community you're serving is low income. So it's like, how do you make it to where the programming is affordable as well, you know? And like, especially with art is like, there's always the supply cost, which, um, you know, is something you have to pay for out of pocket. Usually, usually or have your own, um, and a center like yours, you guys usually supply people with the supplies, you know, like with what they need to actually take yeah. the classes. So, no, well, yeah, we'll just, I think just thinking about like an economy, it's, it's weird to, to think of an economy sometimes like, at least for like impoverished areas, mm-hmm. you know, like it's like San Bernardino is, it's like there's money here. You just sometimes you just don't see the money moving around, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so, but it's but again, it's kind of like that economy that people just sh- sometimes people just share with each other. Yeah, and, you know, they share resources with one another, um, but then there's no number put to that, you know. Like all, all the work that people volunteer at the center, you know. You gotta add a number to that. Yeah. At least minimum wage, that. you know. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta do something with that. Yeah. And so in in a bit but you know, but we're we're doing our best to try to get ourselves organized. So we're like we are putting numbers to all the time and people are contributing to the center too. And you're also counting people coming in. Yeah. Like how many people you serve a year? Mm-hmm. Monthly, yearly. Yeah. So like again, it's it's those tough. are good numbers. Those yeah. are that's what you need if you're running a center, right? You need the mm-hmm. numbers of people coming in, who you're who you're serving. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's definitely tough to, count volunteer hours, yeah. right? Yeah, it's tough to keep track of people, especially when people just you know. Kind what of tools pop are you by. using? Like you that's know, a good question for you. Like Teach again, people. like well, you know, you you do a little bit of everything, you know. You, yeah, yeah. Even if you're having a free event, you just want to have like an online registration. That way you can. So what are you guys using for that? Like Eventbrite, Google Forms, okay. you know, yeah. you know, just easy, easy to use tools like that. Um, that way you can kind of look, okay, see the numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then, you know, then you try to have in-person sign-in sheets too, um, and then yeah, and then but then you also just see like the analytics that you get on like social media, as well as Google. Um, and so it kind of gives you like a, like a starts to paint a picture of you, for you, like of who you're serving. Yeah. The demographics. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's, uh, so it's, so it's a process. So, you know, again, it's like, we're figuring it out. Yeah. Are you, you guys are using WordPress right now. Do you guys have, um, what's your, your newsletter you're using? Is it MailChimp or? Yeah, it's uh, all through Constant Contact. So I think. Constant Contact? Yeah. Are you guys, so that's your CRM, would you say? Like your community or your um, customer ma- relationship management tool? Uh, at, the mo- at the moment, yeah. So. I, I call it a community relationship <laughs> management tool too. So, but yeah, definitely. Um, that's important to have if you're running spaces, right? Um, because then you can yeah. store all that there. You know, also keep people informed. Yeah, and, and, then and that's kind of the... tag people. So, like, you yeah. could say these people only want drawing classes or they want, you know, youth programming. So then when you have a newsletter, you can just tag that one um, sector, right? Yeah. So you can only send it to the youth programming. You know, and, that, and again, that's the kind of the, the, the difficult thing, too. It's like there's... Like there's so many ways to communicate. Mm-hmm. You all at the end of the day, you kind of have to decide what is the way that I want to communicate mm-hmm. with you know with your audience or with the what community. are your channels yeah. that you're gonna invest your time in? Because you, know? you can't you can't in- invest your time in everything you know because then you're again then you're just kind of running around and it's it can be too much. So, um. You so whatever your channel is you guys should definitely do a podcast though i think it'd be cool to just hear like some creatives talking on a podcast and like no well, i i I do like 
Yes, I I have been thinking of just trying to do more of that. Yeah. Possibly just like even like you have a great radio voice, dude. <laughs> I remember that time you did the introduction. <laughs> you could do that. Yeah. Yeah, but that was that was all edited too though. But yeah, and it's um yeah, but just figuring stuff out, you know, and just really making those decisions on how you want to interact with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it can be too much. No, so, no, it could be stressful. I know you're taking some time off and you came to do this. So I, I give you like big props. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother, to be here. Um, but definitely like going going back. So it could be stressful. Like, w- could you kind of explain everything happening at the center right now? Because I, I think that's something that I want um, people to know on this podcast. Because I think talking to the, about the people's plan and what arts connection wrote in their section for the arts is they did highlight the Garcia center being this creative hub and that we need more of these creative hubs throughout the city. Right. Um, can you kind of talk about the program? I mean, I know you, you, you mentioned a little bit about the, we have the, uh, the garden that happened, right. You have that happening. Um, the gar- the arts connection. And I know Garcia center is not leading everything, right. It's different groups. But like you have um, Arts Connection leading that re- art- artist in residency, which is really powerful and important, I feel like, mm-hmm. when it comes to building creative communities. Um, and what else? What else? What other programming is happening there? Uh, I would like to also just highlight quickly is like Central City Coffee. We had them on episode one of the podcast. Um, but they also were like vendoring there. I used to come pick up coffee until yeah. the city came down on them, which was kind of a messed up thing. Cause yeah. yeah, but that was an awesome thing to do is just letting them vendor there and be like, be that resource, you know, to them. No, again, for me, again, right now for me, everything is in a state of experimentation. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely. And, it, and, can, and that can be a little bit tough because sometimes people come to you and ask you, it's like, Oh, so what's going on in the center? And it's kind of tough to not be able to say like these are the regular programs, but yeah. Um, but we do have like things that we do consistently. So we do have ceramics that is there consistently. We have printmaking consistently. The garden is a, like that's going to be a project that's going to continue until you know until somebody decides they don't want to do a garden anymore. I guess. Um, at the center and so we've been developing a strong like group of volunteers and community behind the garden and it's been really cool seeing how many people are dedicated to Mm -hmm. just developing green spaces in San Bernardino Um, and then pretty soon we're going to have glass blowing and yeah and like and but again it's kind of like it's it's kind of tough too because at least when I was uh, starting out it's like you get those questions so so like oh what's so what's on the schedule for the for the center and it's tough because I was the only employee. I'm like the only person, you know. But then, um, but like, yeah, I'm wearing a lot of different hats because we have to like deal with the actual physical space. Like, mm-hmm. we have an actual building, you know, and an actual building comes with costs like electricity, water, you know, just the maintenance of the building. Like some, like we have roof leaks, you know, and just. Because again, it's an older building. It's yeah, not. It's yeah. not like a new construction. So it's, uh, it's almost close to 100 years old. It's a beautiful building and it's in good shape, but it still requires maintenance. Um, and so just that, so just the building maintenance itself is a lot. But then, like the administrative aspect, and you know, like the different elements that come into that, like the HR, the finances, you know, just getting stuff organized. But then on top of that is like the programming, you know, you have to develop that programming. And so it's like, and so it's, it's kind of tough for like when people come, it's like, oh, like what's on the schedule? And it's, and at the moment, it's not like something that's like, like, oh, every Tuesday come by, you know, there's like a drawing class or like we're, we're, we're working towards getting there. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, definitely. You've only and, been there a few years and it was mostly yeah. COVID. So. Yeah. And so we're, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, so you're saying you can't tell me what's happening there at the center? No, like I can tell you what, <laughs> like I can tell you what's happening, but again, it's like I don't even know, like I don't know when this podcast is coming out. Uh, like so a week. it's like, yeah, uh, I produce them in a week about. So like, like I know, like in like it'll come out next Thursday. <laughs> but I don't know if I. Yeah. But you, you don't have to talk about it. Like yeah. what's happening this coming, you yeah. know, week. But you could talk about it like 
yeah what's been happening because i know yeah so again like if you want to take ceramics yeah. classes yeah. you can come by the center printmaking and follow you right like yeah. just go on to the garcia center um what is it sbvca.org is yeah, your guys that's the website website and then the garcia center for the arts on social media yeah so yeah if um, you if you just type the garcia center for the arts it will It'll pop up because there is a lot happening, and it is hard to to talk about. You guys just had that, um, the um, yeah, Dia de los Muertos, yeah, and, yeah, and, that, and again, that it's really cool. For that was like for me too. That's just one of the things too that I've recognized. You know, it's just the power of space too, mm-hmm. uh, because we do have the building. We work with a lot of different organizations, like they use the space. So like pretty soon we're gonna have. Uh, Valley College is going to come out because again, COVID has messed up a lot of things. So, like, and it's like student enrollment at our local community college is really low. Mm, I didn't know that. And so, and so they're looking ways of connecting with the community. Um, and so they're going to be having an event at the Garcia Center um, where they're going to be, you know, talking about some of the different programs that they have, uh, like different arts programs. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so that'll happen um, at the beginning of November. Again, I don't know when this is coming out, but if this is, comes out before November, <laughs> you can come and check it out. And so, like, they're, they're going to have the mascot blue there, uh, and there's going to be some musical performances. There's going to, um, again, they're going to just kind of showcase some of the different uh, programs that they have at Valley College. Yeah, yeah. In terms of, like, around the arts. So that's just one organization that we're, like... Well, you're scheduled I to like, talk collaborate more, with. Yeah. Talk more on this. Like you're saying the power of space. I think that's important when we're talking about creative hubs and like building more of these creative hubs. Right. Um, I think the way uh, well, like, well, like, again, just like, it yeah. is like cares of or blocks of care. Right. Which I think is another program. But like when you have a creative hub, it like creates this system of care, yeah. this system of love of like. Yeah, and you Community. know, and sometimes the space doesn't even need to be physical. Like, mm-hmm. um, like we naturally just inhabit physical space, but yeah, definitely. Um, but because we do have a building, you know, like it's. I've been really kind of recognizing, like, yeah, like having a building that space is such is crucial to building community. Mm-hmm. Um, because it again it just it it really it just creates that hub like with generation now we were able to create that space but again we were going from place to place you we know, never we, had a home yeah. our home was san Bernardino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so but we were able to still create a space with mm-hmm. like with each other um but again just having a physical building kind of changes things where it's like because now there's also there's also limitations to physical space as well. Mm. And so just kind of figuring out how you use the space. Um, and so again, just kind of figuring all that stuff out, but it's, but just recognizing how many people are in search of space, looking to hold events or looking to uh, gather community around a specific thing, you know, whether, mm-hmm. what, whatever that might be. Um, Cause again, like I said before, like everybody has a different idea or a different interest that they want to share or promote. Um, and again, it's tough when you have to say no to people. Because yeah. again, there there is physical limitations and just limitations of time and space. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, but when you are able to provide that space for people, it's it's amazing. You know, it's. And it's and it's powerful because they, it's something that many people in our community haven't had for for as long as they can remember, at least you know, because there there really is a a big need in in our community for spaces. Yeah, I think you touched on a lot, and and one of them is just like when you think about our community, is like most people don't own their 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 land, right? Like most people are renters they're leasing Mm -hmm. so even like finding a hub that they feel like is their home you know what i mean um where they can get support when they need it they can find resources like you talked about not having um 
or like you're always changing the way you have to serve the community. I think I saw that with ICUC, right? When I was working there was we had to shift a lot of programming to be more like COVID relief, like giving out masks, doing a food pan, like food, right? Food giveaways and all that kind of stuff, because that's what people needed at the time. The community who is, you know, um, that, that we live in, like those, that's what people need. So like there is times where you're going to have to shift programming, um, to meet the community's needs. Um, and also just like that, that space is power, you know, like land is power. And that's also just this idea of, um, owning, owning land, owning community owned, um, land as well is like very important to move forward yeah. with. And yeah, again, just kind of on that, like, Again, having the benefit of this of this the space, the center, we did also do COVID clinics. Like we mm-hmm. did vaccination clinics at the center as well. Like we just had one recently, um, you know. But you're again, you're responding to the situation. Like, mm-hmm. like yeah, we've you know we've never. You have to be flexible, right? You know, yeah. I've never experienced a world shutdown, you know, and so like, yeah. So like, we have to kind of like respond. Like this is this is what we need right now, you know, because people are still contracting COVID. And it's like, as you know, as far as my understanding goes, it's like, we're gonna, we're pretty much COVID is kind of stay, stay with us. Stay right? With us. Yeah. yeah. And so, <laughs> but yeah, so you, you know, you do what you can with this, with the resources that you have, but then, yeah, there's certain projects that we wouldn't have been able to do if we didn't have the land, like the dome, we wouldn't have done the dome if we didn't have the actual land. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, the idea of building this dome too was that was something that's been like because I went to Cal Earth too. Uh, it's been floating to, around for years yeah, huh? in the yeah. community in our circles. I, I first originally went with Jenica and Ed. Oh yeah, that was like in 2014 that I went with them to go check it out. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it's like, but now that we have this, we have the land that we can, you know, do stuff on. It's like man, well let's go for it let's let's build a dome you know and you know and and i would just want to kind of say thanks to sam because sam really took it on like you know he sam the man yeah sam the man he 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 took the workshops and really led the community and in, in building the dome you know i was there to support him as much as i could and he showed up yeah. you know every day i think that's the hardest like you're saying um being consistent right mm-hmm. like showing up every day to make sure that thing happens um just going off of that is like, I think the center is a great place. Um, definitely read the people's plan about the arts, the the whole section there. Um, I'll, I'll add the link in the description as well. And um, if you want to follow the Garcia Center, you guys are at the Garcia Center for the Arts on social media, what Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Anywhere else? Uh, that's pretty much the two main YouTube. ones. YouTube. Maybe in the future we'll develop it more, but there we okay. do have a couple of videos on YouTube though. But yeah, and then um, website sbvca.org, and that's the 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 San Bernardino Valley Concert Association's website. But yeah. you guys are a project of that, right? Yeah, I think eventually we're just gonna do a name change altogether just to avoid confusion. But yeah, for the moment, yeah, sbvca.org. That would be very helpful, man. <laughs> and you guys can just find the Garcia Center on yeah. Google. It pops up. And, yeah. and be sure to review it. Like, give the Garcia Center some reviews, you know, help it out. Yeah. And go check out something that's happening there. Go see a concert. Come to one of the classes, you know. Um, go see the garden, even. Just go go for a stroll around the center. You don't even have to do anything. You just come yeah. to just explore the space and, and, and take some photos and whatnot. Um, but thank you so much for your time, George, for being here. Yeah, um, of course. I could talk to you for days. <laughs> like we could do this for probably three hours and just go into other stuff and go into history and um, and uh, and I don't know if you want to do that. I don't know if you want to keep going or if you want to <laughs> end it here. But I don't know. How's your time right now? Oh, well, I'm here right now. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm- no, yeah, I just wanted to kind of like touch what, on the people's you, plan. Yeah, what do you want to talk about? I think no, that's well, the, 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 the people's plan is also like, because um, I was really like, like inspired by the people's plan as well. Like, like y- you know, the people's plan is like a bunch of different organizations coming together. And mm-hmm. um, so it's like, I really hope like this collaboration continues. Um, but like, I just wanted to touch on the people's plan too, because 
some of the artwork that was included in that people's plan is at the center like we uh gave a stipend to the artist to allow us to print some of their artwork and so now we have it hanging in the garden area so like Sarah Vasquez's like yeah. her artwork serves as the cover for the people's plan or, or the for people's the dictionary. dictionary yeah yeah for the dictionary the supplementary yeah. like workbook so the people's dictionary it's like her artwork is the cover for it and so and that's hanging in the garden so it's like Olivia Flores's artwork um I think Jay uh from uh, Creative Grounds his piece is up there as well as well as uh Brenda Angel she goes as a uh, BA Soul on Instagram. They're like their work is up there, and so those pieces are, are I think are all in the People's Dictionary, and so they're up at the center. Yeah, it's amazing, dude. Like that you guys did that too. Is like putting that out there in the garden as well. Is like yeah, it's it's really cool to drive by on East Street and be able to see that the artwork just kind of hanging up. What, what's your vision for the center, by the way? I think that's one thing I forgot to ask you, man. Is like. See, so moving forward, right? You have a lot going on. It sounds like you're still getting your structure together, which is no, like, yeah, I, think I feel like least, every org's doing that. Yeah. So don't feel like you're the only director who's No, like, and I completely understand yeah. that, like, that's something that you have to continuously do. Yeah, yeah. So, With the times, because yeah. tech is always changing. You know, the times are always changing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so tools. again, yeah, it's something that you continuously need to do, like reevaluate, reflect, mm -hmm. and kind of adjust. Um, so I completely like understand that, but but it's kind of difficult because we have experienced a lot of changes at the center, and so trying to like, okay, <laughs> you know, it's like right now we're like in a state of like growth, um, and so really figuring out how to make that sustainable, that growth sustainable. Um, What's your vision? Tell me. My, at least for me, it's just I will really like it where. For me, it'd be nice to get on that like a regular program, like you know, where people know they they can come on Wednesdays at this hour, and and you know, and come in for this program or that class. Yeah, I go on Thursdays and yeah. there's live drawing or yeah. something. Yeah, and so be cool. so for me that that for me that's the next step, just trying to get to that point. Um, but in terms of like, I still want to see the community continue to build. Um. And so that's kind of what's hard too is like right now, at least in the community where we're at, in terms of serving the community, it really feels like we're the only ones there in that community because everything else around us is like car shops, like, mm -hmm. you know, fast food. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even fast food. It's just, there's, it's just really all just car shops all along East Street. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. What about baseline though? You have a lot of different. Little like shops we have the, and stores. Um, like on the corner of Baseline and E, it's just the the car wash. There's the there's the um the school. The it's not called the adult school, but you know the the school. Then there's a another car shop on the corner, and then um and then it's like the West Western Dental on the other corner. Mm. So so it gets a little you know it's a little rough, and then. You know, sadly, along baseline too, is just a lot of empty, empty businesses that are boarded up. But, um, but yeah, there's, there's little like little businesses, little food food joints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but which yeah. is also arts, culinary arts. Yeah. Right? So, well, so ten years from now, what do you see? Like, what's your vision for the center? I'm trying to still get that out of you, George. No, oh, well, yeah. my vision. I, I think the center itself is, again, there's going to come to a point where it's like, it's just the limitations are there. You know, it's like... Like you're eventually going to fit into a structure where it's like a natural programming yeah. and you're not going to be able to grow anymore, you're saying? Like yeah, you're going to so get to a point where yeah, it's... Yeah, so it's going to get to a point where it's just going to like, everything's just like pretty consistent, pretty regular, like... Um, you know, things will come because you guys are doing this right now, yeah. right? So eventually, you're gonna get to the point where you just like flatten out, yeah. and you're just going like in a consistent. Yeah, like the people will change. You know, maybe like we'll get new instructors, new or artists, new yeah. artists. You know, like like stuff will. You know, things will always you know be different. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of, but it will. But the goal is to try to get everything on a regular regular schedule. Mm. So people know what to expect instead of, you know, guessing. Um, but there's always something going on at the center. But again, it's like, it'd be nice if people 
kind of where it got to the point where the community already knew like it's on a regular what's uh, what's on the regular schedule yeah um, i think the center is definitely going to grow culturally too when you have like the shop come up right because then there's going to be a place for people to actually like become fans i guess of the center you're gonna be able to buy garcia center shirts mm -hmm. i'm sure really cool ones because you're gonna have all these artists designing them um, maybe there's going to be the publishing happening where people are going to be able to buy Garcia Center books, which is like an educational aspect. Mm -hmm. I know there's more stuff happening with zines in the city, probably yeah, more zine so, fest there. Yeah. So again, there's always some, yeah. yeah. So that's another event that's coming up soon. Well, we you have guys, the, we, you never the zine even, fest is coming up. <laughs> yeah. There's a zine fest, but you never even mentioned the, the library. I just realized that. No. Like, yeah. But the again, there's then. always something going on at the center. Like, uh, we also just recently got a printer at the center that we're housing for, for Fabian, uh, <laughs> you know, and so that he won't let me touch. Yeah. But it's cool. It's he'll, cool. He'll, Fabian. Eventually he'll come around. He'll, he'll His show's happening too this weekend. Yeah. So Fabian's up. show yeah. is happening this weekend at the little gallery. This will release before that, but yeah, you guys can see the documentation on my, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure well if, it, yeah. if this comes out next week you'll still be able to see the show at least oh yeah it'll, uh, it'll be still in the be gallery up. cool 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 but yeah but you know just being able to house that printer there at the center is very cool um yeah, yeah again so i i love the space because it is a hub it's very collaborative mm -hmm. but again that's the, for me at least for me that's the goal just try to get everything on a regular schedule so people know like and, we're, and it's happening because... Because it creates the consistency, you're saying. Yeah, because like, we have people that. like Tanya. Yeah. We have Tanya Rivas. Uh, she's um, been teaching yoga every Sunday on mm -hmm. a regular basis. Um, we also have um, Nico, who does capoeira. And he's really interested in doing it consistently as well, every Saturday morning as well. Wow, that's cool. And so, man. like, it's it's nice to be able to put things on a... Cons like, okay, like, every Saturday morning, every Sunday morning, we know we have capoeira and yoga and so something fits like a physical you know art that people can do um so it'd be nice to get some of the other things on a regular schedule as well like the ceramics the printmaking glass blowing when we started it'd be nice to be able to get those things on a regular schedule the garden has been developing like a regular schedule like like mondays uh monday evenings we're, we're doing like focus on gardening mm -hmm. um, wednesdays there's composting um and then we were doing dome building, but we finished putting the bags down. Um, and then we're going to set up a schedule for like plastering when we when we start doing that. Yeah, so it's been, so yeah, slowly, you know, so I see it happening already, like where the pieces are coming together, trying to create a regular schedule. Um, but yeah, but really for my, my vision for like the center itself, it's how it contributes to the community at large. Like mm -hmm. how is the center going to play into like the development of the city as a whole. Um, and that's really what I'm excited about. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna say it's doing it. Like, yeah. I, I think you're saying like, how is it gonna do it? But it's, you guys have been doing it by by housing, like by housing arts connection, Yeah, but like right? so the Central City Coffee, right? So like the Central City yeah, Coffee, true, true. Like, like even though we were able to house their pop-ups for a while, it'd be nice to have them close by. Um, yeah. And that might and that might be happening soon. We're, we're trying know. to work on that with just SV, but so, we'll see how that plays so no, out. So no announcements have been made, so we probably shouldn't even be talking about it. Yeah, yeah, but, we're, we're trying and, <laughs> to get spaces. Yeah. But but yeah, so but there's the possibility of like new spaces opening up, like that are near the center. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's for me that's the exciting part because like because that's how a real community starts for me, you know. Like just having the center itself is like, it's nice to like for the center to get a lot of attention. But for me, that's not real community. Like real community for me is like what you guys have been building, yeah. which is like that artist community, the volunteers, the people coming. No, to but garden. also just different spaces around the center that also serve, like also cater to like to people, mm. you know, mm. um, where I people can are, go where people yeah. can go and eat grab a drink or you know or you're talking about just economic development happening yeah. that's owned by the people yeah like where people are opening their own restaurant like we're not getting more starbucks more mcdonald's more mm -hmm. you know what i mean like we're, we're trying to build like our own culture in a sense yeah so it'd be nice to see the community again because it's like 
because again, people love the Garcia Center. Like they're like, oh man, this is like a a jewel in the city. It's like a, it's it like is. a little oasis. It's the diamond you in know? the rough, they say. Yeah. You know? You know, but you don't want it to, you know, you want it to be like a diamond amongst other diamonds, you know, like, you know, you other are, spaces. Again, kinda. going back to you are doing that, like you, you don't, you're not seeing it, but like just Arts Connection in general is out there downtown doing a lot of the work mm-hmm. there. You have people like West Side Story, right? Freddie and um, Rom- Romulo yeah. um, doing the art walk with No, so yeah, Chris, so it is right? happening. So it is happening. So again, but it's kind of like. It's, how it's how is this? Dude. It be, it's happening. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like you but, are doing it. But but again, for me, that's the exciting part. You know, for me, that's the exciting part. I don't want to see the the center in a silo. You know, I I wanted to I want to see how it can continue to like play out in in like the the larger scheme of the city. Pretty much, you're open to doing partnerships and working yeah. with people. That's what you're saying. Pretty much, yeah. Because you're yeah. doing it, dude. Like, yeah. Creative Grounds is another example. And then the little gallery, like, Fabian having his show, but he's housing his printer at the Garcia Center. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of those artists I see at the Garcia Center, I see them whenever I go to Downtown Art Walk, you know? Like, I'm, I'm there, like, I'm like, hey, what's up? Hey, how are you doing? I see Sarah, you know, vendoring or whoever. Um, yeah, so, like, so, again, it is happening, but... Again, for me, when you're talking about 10 years from now, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how does that community look like 10 years from now? You know, I'll definitely be bringing my kids if you have the programming. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Maya and Max will be there at the center um, learning arts. Because, yeah, again, so, like, cause again we're, we have to think about sustainability. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, uh, there's been a lot of gardens pop up, for example, too. You know? They have died, yeah. Or but it's like, away. like, we're lucky. We're very fortunate to own where we have the garden Mm -hmm. but that's not the same for all the gardens so like some and have equity in it you guys have money now like if you really needed to you could sell it make Mm -hmm. some money back Mm -hmm. so but again it's like but like the other spaces you know the other creative spaces in our city like we got to make sure that that they stick around too Oh, true, so that true. they exist, exist 10 years from now. And I think that's the big question that we talked about in the people's plan. And we've talked about on the other podcast that we, I never released was, um, you know, the little gallery being owned by developers, right. Being owned by other people. Um, like, are they eventually going to get pushed out because of rent? And then yeah. the same thing with like creative grounds, it's downtown. Yeah, it's owned again, by somebody we're, else. We're, right now we're very fortunate that, this, that these spaces are, are growing, they're developing. But, they're, but, then, but then that's what every developer does when you look at like uh, gentrification, right? Like they bring in artists and creatives at a low cost and they know that these people build culture and they get yeah. people out to see their work, right? And then eventually it's just like a shift happens and now they sell that space to you know, Starbucks or something. Yeah. So, cause I, I know that's like, I know that's happening again, just going back to the gardens. I know that's happening with like Amy's farm, like in, mm-hmm. in Ontario, Amy's farm has been there for 20 years, 30 years, I think. Um, cause Amy is an, a real person. It's, you know, the, she was a little girl when the farm got started. So the farm was named after her, just like her farm, but now she's an adult, but now they're selling, because they never purchased the land. The land was never theirs. Now it's being sold off and, you know, potentially going to be turned into warehousing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... That's sad. That's yeah. a really sad story. And so, but how, you know, how do we, how, how can we kind of p- prevent stuff like that from happening? Because for me, that's like one of the sad things, you know, it's like you, again, you develop these memories, have these good experiences in these spaces, like... Um, like the Black Flame Collective, you know oh, that's where man. that's where Ernie first came to us. You know, yeah, Ernie, I that. like Ernie first was looking for volunteers for the Garcia Center, and he came to the Black Flame Collective. I'm like he showed up, he came like, to hey, this guys. punk venue. You yeah. know, um, like and I'm always gonna remember that. But again, the Black Flame Collective doesn't exist anymore, so we don't even have like a DIY punk venue. You know, in San Bernardino, like. Um, and the same thing with, uh, series cartoons, you know, like that was an amazing spot. That like, was a great space. Specifically for like the hip hop community, you know? And, but again, that's gone too. It's like, like, how do we own land? How yeah. do we start getting land? So you funders out there, people with money, you know, yeah. we need to own land. Like you need to start helping the community own land and Our purchase properties, these spaces. You know, yeah, pr- purchase some properties and be able to 
like all your grant funding is great, but if we don't have land in the end, like it's not sustainable. I think mm-hmm. that's really what it is, right? And and you guys have such a better chance of being very sustainable coming into the future. No, yeah, again, we're very so, fortunate. So yeah. like, um, again, I kind of reflect on it, and I'm like, man, we're in a very good space. Like, like we have a lease for 99 years. As long as we it's don't a land trust, right? Is that what it's called? A land trust, or I'm not sure because it's not. It's it's not. We don't have any ownership in it. Yeah, yeah. We're just technically just leasing it. Yeah. But yeah. it's for 99 years, so that's a long lease, you know. And so I'm gonna look that up and add it because there is a way communities can yeah. do this, like what the yeah, Garcia as far as Center like did. a land trust, like yeah. For me, the the word trust just means you have ownership in it. So mm-hmm. at least with the building of the center, we don't have any ownership of it, but we have ownership of the the garden area, the garden land. So we do own that. Um, and so, um, but yeah, so, but like, but it, yeah, we're in a good spot, mm-hmm. you know, we're very fortunate. Um, and so, so as long as we don't mess up, you know, like, unless there's no like blatant corruption of like finances and it, we should be, we should be good. And, you know, but it, again, it's kind of like building that up, you know, building that team up and getting structures in place where and just processes in place where we where we do the best job that we can do with the resources that we have at the center definitely man Uh, thank you so much i'm I'm gonna end it here um and if people want to donate again spbca.org you can visit the center as well what's your address 536 west 11th street we're on e street uh just below baseline yeah and uh social media the garcia center for the arts thank you so much again george for joining us and uh i'm sure we'll have you on in the future (laughs) because you guys are always doing something so yeah